Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. This is Jamie Holden here with you once again this week, and I'm so happy that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to join us. Well guys, before we jump into what we want to share with you this week, I want to have one quick announcement. We're so excited to be able to share this with you. We want to let you know that the Mantor Guy Podcast is now available on Amazon Music. So if you use Amazon Music or Amazon Music app to listen to your music through Amazon Prime, you can now listen to the Mantor Guy podcast on that app. All you have to do is say, Alexa, play the Mantor Guy podcast, and she'll play the next episode for you. We're really excited about this new edition. You can listen to it right there through Alexa if you have an Alexa, or you can just listen to it on the Amazon Music app. But that's brand new. We are now available for free on the Amazon Music. So check that out, guys. Well, guys, this week I want to share with you something that's just God stirred in my heart for a while now. And I want to start by asking you, have you ever heard of the three R's? The three R's have quickly become a things of the past, you know, and however, anytime we hear a story about how poorly students are doing in school or how, how bad test scores have become, people all pull out the phrase, we need to get back to the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. That's what the three R's are. Well, people look at the three R's as the cornerstone of the educational system. And back in the day before kids had a bajillion extracurricular activities, before sports ruled the schools, Students learn the three main things they need to grow, how to read, how to write, and how to add. These three basic skills are necessary for any student to graduate and go on to live productive, successful lives. Guys, did you know the Christian walk has its own version of the three R's? Three things that are basic for men of God to learn to become all God wants them to be. Just like the three R's in our schools, these three things are quickly being pushed aside. As we strive to not offend anyone, we have slowly begun to move away from three main staples of the Christian faith. Progressive Christianity is kind of coming in and saying, these three things aren't really that important. They're not really that vital. They are important. As men of God, we need to have these three R's active in our life. And because they're being slowly pushed out of the Christian faith, We see people teetering on the brink of raising up a generation of weak, worldly, compromising believers who are getting their butts kicked by a defeated enemy on a regular basis. The enemy is defeated, yet he's winning battles because we've kind of steered away from these three main staples of the Christian faith. And just like those who use the rallying crying the three R's as a means to get refocused on what is important, I am going to offer you this week this rallying cry. We need to get back to the three H's in the lives of believers. And what are the three H's? Number one is a hunger for God. One thing I've noticed lately is an attitude whelming up that says, I have to go to church, or I have to read the Bible, or I have to pray. Have to? Seriously? What happened to the hunger inside of us that we first felt when we got saved? We have allowed a complacency to settle into our Christian lives. We need to return to the place where we were when we first came to God. You remember when you first got saved? Do you remember the sense of peace and fulfillment and happiness that you felt when you discovered that only God would forgive you your sins, but he longed to develop a personal walk with you? Do you remember how excited you were when you first started reading the Bible? Do you remember the joy of spending time in prayer, pouring your heart out to God, and telling Him everything? Do you recall the prayer sessions when you prayed so big to God and you really believed He would answer your prayer? That is where we need to get back to in our lives and the church as a whole. We need to get back to the place where we so hunger for God that we can't wait to get back to his house of worship to learn and grow. We must return to the place where church is where we want to be, not the place we have to go to save face. Complacency in an attitude that church isn't cool or relevant has placed a stronghold over the modern-day church. 
We need to get back to the first H of having an endless hunger for God, where we can have all of God that we can get, where time in the Word is not drudgery, but it's our hope, and we just eat it up. And time in prayer, we just eat it up. We learn everything we can about God. We need that endless hunger to return in our lives. The second H I want to look at is holiness. And yes, I'm going to go there. When did holiness become a dirty word among God's children? We need to get back to a place as believers where we strive to live a holy life before God, a life where we come out from the world and live a sanctified, holy life. Now, I'm not saying we need to cut ourselves off from the unsaved or act like we are better than they are. Jesus never did that. He always made time for public and sinners. However, Jesus never went down to their level. He always raised them up to his level. One of the things that concerns me the most in today's modern church is this new doctrine of needing to be practical and relevant. Progressive Christianity is gutting the word of God and holiness in order to condone the sins that they're comfortable with and they want to keep committing, but also just to make it as easy as possible to be a Christian. Now, I get the general sentiment. We have to reach the world where they are and bring them to Christ, but that's not what's happening. Instead of bringing the world raising them up to God, they're bringing the church down to the world. Practical plus relevant cannot equal compromise. We become a generation of believers who excuse our sin away far too much. We're becoming too worldly and compromising our beliefs way too much under the guise of reaching the lost. Jesus never operated that way. He reached the world but he maintained a pure lifestyle before both the world and his father. And when he reached out to the world, he always did it in a way of bringing them to God. He never left them where they were. He sought to raise them up to a higher calling. He sought to bring them out of their sinful life and start them on a new path of righteousness. We must get back to a place of holiness. God is looking for a spotless bride, but unfortunately we are picking up spots and blemishes as we compromise and try and live as close to the world as possible without totally falling away from God. Anytime someone says something is wrong, they are labeled legalistic. The person who says drinking is wrong for a Christian is told they're they're legalistic. The man who says Christians shouldn't be playing poker or gambling are labeled as out of touch or fanatical. The person who says you shouldn't be watching TV or movies with sexual content or demonic themes is told they're radical. The guy who says this conversation or these jokes are inappropriate and you need to stop is being labeled a prude. You know what I call them? People pursuing a holy life. You know what the apostle Peter calls them? People like God. 1 Peter 1, 14, 16 says, As obedient children... Do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I'm holy. You know what Paul calls these people? Obedient children of God. 1 Thessalonians 4, 7 says, For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. You know what the author of Hebrew calls these people? The people who will be in heaven. Hebrews 12, 14, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That last one is a scary verse. But the Bible clearly says if we aren't pursuing holiness or sanctification, or more plainly, if we're not becoming less like the world and becoming more like Jesus, we're not going to make it to heaven. The second age of holiness is a vital teaching we have to get back to in today's church. Holiness is not a dirty word. Sin needs to be called sin. Compromise needs to be called compromise. And the pursuit of a godly lifestyle needs to become our rallying cry as we live in a perverted world who is longing for people to say, I'm holding myself to a higher standard. I'm living for God and trying to become more like his son, Jesus. Well, guys, we've looked at the first two H's together, and right after the break, we're going to finish our discussion look at the third H as we continue with the Mentor Guy podcast.
Yep. You're listening to the Mantor, Mantor Guy Podcast. Podcast. You asked, we answered. For the past few years, we had so many men request an audio version of our books. And we are happy to bring you our first ever audiobook. Check out this sample from Whatever It Takes Men's Edition audiobook. Over the years of my life, I have been faced with this question over and over again as God repeatedly asked me to take new leaps of faith, to follow him blindly wherever he leads, to go boldly into new areas of life and ministry, to give everything up for him, and to do whatever it takes to follow his calling on my life. Over and over, I have made the reckless decision to follow Jesus. Even though I didn't always know where that would take me, I knew that I loved Jesus and wanted his will for my life. You can get your copy today at Amazon, Audible Books, and iTunes. Visit MantorMinistries.com slash whatever it takes, all one word, for more information. I know you're going to dig this. Like what you're hearing? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Guys, fall is here, and that means it is time for the annual Pendel Potomac Men's Conference. You do not want to miss it this year. This year's theme is endurance, and the conference is going to be held on Saturday, October 17th at Christian Life Assembly in Camp Hill, PA. It's a one-day conference this year because of the corona situation. It's on Saturday, October 17th. They have an amazing lineup of speakers this year. Um, Doug Clay, the General Superintendent of the Assemblies of God, is going to be sharing in the first session. The second session is going to be John Bevere, who is just a powerful leader of men, and he has written many books and spoken at many men's conferences. He always does a great job, brings a powerful word when he shares. And the final session is going to be led by Greg Ford. You may remember last year, Greg brought such a powerful word. He was very popular, the men loved him. He's going to be returning this year for the closing session. Guys, do not miss the Endurance Men's Conference. If there's one thing that men of God needed in this crazy year of 2020, it's endurance. And the Pendel Potomac Conference theme is endurance. It's going to be held Saturday, October 17th at Christian Life Assembly in Camp Hill, PA. For more information, visit enduranceconference.men. That's enduranceconference.men. We will see you at the Endurance Men's Conference. The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God. Hey guys, Jimmy Holden here, the Mantor Guy. And you know, so often men tell me that they can't afford to use covenant eyes. And my immediate response back is, dude, you can't afford not to use covenant eyes. For 53 cents a day, you can protect every computer, every laptop, every tablet and cell phone that you and your family own from the trap of internet pornography. I tell them for 53 cents a day or $16 a month, you can make sure your little girls never stumble onto pornography as she uses Snapchat or does any internet searches while doing her homework. For 53 cents a day, you can make sure your son never falls into the trap of pornography or even sees it accidentally while online. I say for 53 cents a day, you can protect your wife from getting trapped in the trap of internet porn and protect your marriage. And I tell them for 53 cents a day, you can help break the cycle of internet pornography that's been holding in your life. Guys, you and your family, and most importantly, your walk with God cannot afford for you not to use covenant eyes. So head to mantorministries.com and hit the Covenant Eyes button in the upper right-hand corner to get one month of free service. Try it out. I know you're going to love it. You're never going to regret it. Guys, do it today. You can't afford not to have Covenant Eyes be a part of your life. Welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Welcome back, guys. As we continue to learn about the three ages of a man of God, let's finish up here by looking at our final age. Number three, the Holy Spirit. One of the greatest concerns I see today is a shying away from the works and actions of the Holy Spirit. On one level, I get it. Speaking in tongues and prophetic words in tongues looks crazy to the average onlooker. In reality, it weirds out a lot of believers as well. But it shouldn't. The greatest gift God gave us besides sending His Son to provide for our salvation is the Holy Spirit. 
God knew we couldn't make it in the world after Jesus returned to heaven without his Holy Spirit to guide us. He knew we needed it. So why has the church backed away from accepting God's gift to us? We need to return to a place where we lead spirit-led lives. What does this mean? It means we allow the Holy Spirit to do his work of conviction. One reason we've abandoned the second age of holiness is because we have suppressed the third age of the Holy Spirit. Sanctification and the ability to develop a holy life is only possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. He convicts us of areas of sin and compromise in our lives. He shows us areas that we need to become less like the world and more like Jesus. Then he shows us how to make changes and how to live a different life going forward. The Holy Spirit inside of us is what allows us to live holy lives. Suppressing the third age of the Holy Spirit is also leading to the cause of the lack of our first age, a hunger for God. When we don't allow the Holy Spirit to bring the Bible to life in our lives, it just becomes a good book that we have to read. But when we let the Holy Spirit shine his light on areas of our lives as we read the Bible, it becomes alive in our lives and we will hunger and long to get back to the Bible daily to see what God has for us in his word today. Backing away from the work of the Holy Spirit also weakens our prayer lives. Speaking in tongues allows us to pray in a heavenly language. Romans 8, 26-27 says, In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. We don't know what we ought to pray for, but the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. This verse says the Holy Spirit helps us pray. If we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to influence our lives, it will affect our prayer lives as well. The Mantor Guy's final thought. Guys, we have such a tremendous power in our lives when we live a spirit-led lifestyle. Throughout history, the darkest periods of time spiritually are when the Holy Spirit and His power are downplayed and suppressed. However, the greatest times of revival and works of God happen when believers allow the Spirit to live, operate, and flow through them and use them to do the will of God. I don't know about you guys, but I think the one thing the world needs more than anything else is a mighty move of God. However, the only way this can happen is if we return to the three H's. We need to become men who are filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to allow him to work in us and through us. We need to allow him to stir up that hunger inside of us for more of God and his presence. We need him to shine his light of conviction on our lives so we put off sin and compromise and put on the holiness of God. We need to get back to the three H's. Only then can a new wave of revival break out. Only then can we become all that God created us to be. Men, let's get back to hunger for God, holiness, and a Holy Spirit-led life. That's what God called us to do, to pursue the three H's. Well, guys, we are out of time for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you giving up your time to listen. We'd love to have you go to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Google Play, and the Amazon Music. Remember, we're available now on Amazon Music. All you have to do is say, Alexa, play the Mantor Guy podcast, or just turn it on your Amazon Music app. You can listen to the Mantor Guy podcast right there. You can subscribe, give a five-star rating and review when you go to podcast iTunes. Also, make sure to head to our website, mantormysteries.com. Check out our books and our resources, our monthly newsletters there. You can read the first chapter of whatever it takes for free. Um, we're slowly getting the Mantor website uploaded with updated with all the new information for the speakers. I hope to have that finished at the beginning of this week. We'll be able to see the speakers, the locations, the dates. Everything will be available by the end of this week. So, guys, check it out. Visit the website, mantorministries.com. But, guys, once again, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week on the Mantor Guy podcast. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy podcast. Be sure to visit mantorministries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our mentor conferences.
Have you been looking for a Bible study that you can work through with your wife? Maybe you want to do devotional time with your daughter. Guys, we have the answer for you. You can buy both the men's and women's edition of Whatever It Takes for $15. This amazing deal is only available at our Mantor Ministries online store. If you go to Amazon, it is $14.99 for just the men's version. So many men are buying both versions and going through them with their wives and daughters. Do not miss this opportunity. Take advantage of this amazing deal today at MantorMinistries.com and click on the online store button. Order your copy today at MantorMinistries.com. One more thing before I wrap up this week, guys. You need to head to CovenantEyes.com and sign up today to protect you and your loved ones from the many traps awaiting you on the internet. You know, I am a Covenant Eyes user. I just signed my 69-year-old father up and put Covenant Eyes on his phone and his laptop. I believe in it. It's an amazing tool. It helps you stay pure online. Guys, I encourage you to try it today. If you use the code MANTOR, you get 30 free days. That's 30 free days. What do you have to lose? So head to CovenantEyes.com. Try it today. Like I said, what do you have to lose, guys? The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God.